Ladies and gentlemen, Barrel and Blade. Here it is, January 2021. Uh, arrived right after Battle Box. Had to think for a second. A little late at night. But I'm excited because here we get to do another unboxing really quick. Yay. And before the end of the month, which is awesome. So, if you guys noticed, this is more and more my favorite EDC <laughs> lately. Old, tried and true design. Um, not expensive. Cheap. Got a whole video on the history uh, and where these things come from, the Higo no Kami. You know what? I'm going to put a card right up there so you can check it out if you want. It's great, great knives. Love them. Uh, and, and cool historical stuff about them. So let's get into this box, barrel and blade, for January 2021. Whoa, what do we got here? Looks <coughs> like so we got some gun stuff. Gun stuff, tactical pen. See, you guys thought I made it up. You guys thought I made it up last, well, like with the Olight stuff and all this. Tactical pen. It's a real thing. And here's another one. People, people, like, it's a real product. All right, let me get it unpacked, and we'll take a look at it all. Not a lot in this box. Not as many items. I shouldn't say not a lot. I should say not as many items as in some of the previous months. So Barrel and Blade, like many other subscriptions, comes in different levels. Level 1, level 2. Um, in level 2, you get uh, sometimes advanced, like, um bigger, better, faster version of the stuff that comes in level one. What they used to do a lot is like you'd get like, let's say you'd get a knife in level one, but you'd get like a bigger, better knife in level two, stuff like that. But but lately it's just been more stuff. So one, two, three, four items in level one, one, two, three, four, five, six items in level two. And it looks like just kind of looking at the card real fast. Um, yeah, you're just getting two more items in level two. And love Operation 43, uh, we're excited to bring you some of your favorite rifle accessories and tactical gear this month. So I, you know, right off the bat, I understand this is, this is not a box for everyone. Um, not everybody here um, owns a rifle. I know that a lot of viewers around the world, because, you know, we've got, we've got friends that watch the channel literally around the globe. And in a lot of those places... They cannot own the rifles that we have. And, you know, I've had people ask, like, hey, why do you guys in America, why do you need to own things like an AR-15? And my response is, uh, because it's none of your business. The Constitution says we can. That's why. Um, honestly, um, <clears throat> it's not about needing. It's about the fact that it, you have the freedom to do it for the reasons that the original Constitution was written and the revolution was fought in the first place and a whole lot of stuff. But that's not that's not the point right now. So I get that this box is probably not going to appeal to a great many people. Um, now, that's not to say that all these accessories are only for tactical style rifles or, or um, sporting rifles. I'm sure that some of them can be used on hunting um, style rifles at all. But here's a little key, too, a little trick that you don't know. A great many times, the only difference between what would be classified as a tactical or sporting rifle and a hunting rifle is the furniture. They did a great experiment once where they took a Ruger 1022 and they had, uh, it's a rifle, look it up. They had one with tactical, ooh, quotes again, tactical black plastic uh, stock. And they had one with the natural, like, walnut wood stock. And they asked people the difference between the two. And they got, you know, this one's an assault rifle. This one's a weapon. This one's blah, blah, blah. Oh, but this one's a hunting rifle. And then what they did was they showed how they just swapped out the metal parts, put them in the other stocks, and showed them it was the exact same rifle. And the only difference was one had wood and one had plastic. And people were dumbfounded and couldn't, they just couldn't understand End of the speech, though. You guys know I'm pretty pro Second Amendment, um, and I I'm pro every amendment. I'm pro the United States Constitution. But anyway, so let's take a look at what we've got, because there are some there are some accessories here. Even though I notice, you know, I have my rifle that I've shown on the channel sometimes, and I'm going to try to not do it here just so the video doesn't get bumped or demonetized or stuff like that. But even though I have a rifle, some of these accessories are not going to work for me because I've already looked at some of them. They're just you know. Not everybody can use every single accessory all the time. But we're going to start off. We're going to go right down. We're going to go right down the card. And then we're going to take a look at it all. And I love Barrel and Blade in general. Um, I, you know, I think that they offer a really good value for the money most of the time. Um, so the first item here is the Voodoo Tactical. And I love Voodoo Tactical. Great brand. My favorite bag. Um, my, um, I'm going to edit out all this finger twiddling. Or maybe I'm not. Um, the Improved Matrix, Voodoo Tactical Improved Matrix um, backpack, favorite backpack I own. Um, they make some really good gear. 
but the Voodoo Tactical Waterproof Rifle Bag, MSRP of $20. So basically what it is, is it's, it's a rifle length dry bag. And if you've seen a dry bag, you know how a dry bag works. If you haven't seen a dry bag, well, this is what happens. So it's, it's a waterproof bag and it's got a rigid kind of closure at the top that you fold up and then you buckle and it keeps things dry. They're usually not this long though. So this, I gotta smell it. Oh yeah, mmm, smells like a uh, tent floor. So this is, and it is well branded, mind you. This is just a rifle length dry bag, is, is all it is. And it is, it is long. Um, Does it say, it does not say exactly how long on the thing. So hold on, let me tell you exactly how long this, this guy is. Roughly, you know, this is not gonna be exact measurement because I don't want to lay down on a perfectly flat surface, but yeah, roughly 58 inches of, uh, 58 inches of dry bag here um, for whatever kind of rifle you're putting in there. And that is going to hold most things, I think. Um, so the way it works, again, for those who aren't familiar with the dry bag, so it's just, you know, it's a heavy grade, reinforced, waterproof, you know, plastic. You put your dry, your your rifle, uh, and honestly, if you don't have a rifle, you put whatever you want in here. Uh, it keeps everything safe. You fold it down a few times, and it is now basically impermeable to water. The more times you can fold it, the better. And then when you're all done folding it, you reach together and close it and and believe me this will keep stuff dry um, they issue these dry bags out not this one obviously but they issue dry bags out in the military you can buy them in a lot of uh, adventure cut rei sells them um, walmart sells them i mean you could get them in catalogs they're they're tried and true and they work really well however once again they're normally not this long they're normally they come in different sizes but they're for gear and it's pretty cool to have one for your rifle especially since I, I sense that if uh, the current administration has their way with some new regulations, there's going to be a lot of rifles lost in boating accidents um, when people come looking for them. And these j just might be handy to have your rifle in a bag like this on a boat, just just in case, just in case. I'm just saying. Um, so you know what? This has to go, and I like it because this is absolutely useful. Um, <coughs> one of your rifle's uh, worst enemies is water and moisture. Um, of course, preventative maintenance, preventative maintenance, preventative maintenance, and cleaning after use is the golden key to keeping your particular firearm operational at all times, and that is drilled in. If you take any kind of operations course, safety course, um, or you know military training, of course. But this is great. Now, this is not. You can't just throw your rifle in here and, as like a storage device. This is not going to keep it dry and clean from like moisture in the air. If there's moisture in the air and you pack it up in here, you're packing it up in there unless you throw a whole bunch of those little silica packets in there and whatnot. But when you're going out hunting, camping, adventuring, whatever, this is a great way to pack it up so that nothing uh, undue or, or unfortunate happens to it. Um, 20 bucks for a good dry bag is not an, un an unheard of price. And again, one more time, have not seen a rifle sized dry bag before. But then again, I also haven't been, been out looking for them. So, not bad. Not bad. And I'm probably going to put this in I like it because who knows what's going to happen if and when, you know, they try to start taking those things away. Since I can't have alcohol lately, rocking cranberry ginger ale tonight, if anybody's interested. Some people ask, what are you drinking? They do. So, the next item we're going to look at. <clears throat> Another Voodoo Tactical item. I guess they got a deal on some Voodoo Tactical stuff. The Voodoo Master Tactical Pen. Um, so, <clears throat> now I had mentioned this before, and we've seen tactical pens on the channel. Um, we've seen them in other boxes. We, we've seen them just recently, the Olight video. Um, and the Olight sale, which, you know what? It, by the time you watch this video, it will be it will be over. So hopefully you have gotten some good deals for yourself. But we just saw the, the um, O-Pen 2, um, which has a light on and everything. But a tactical pen, although we might laugh at the name, it is it is literally a pen that you can use, but it also has other uses. It is e either um, steel, 
aluminum or titanium, usually aluminum or titanium to keep it light. Titanium are the most expensive ones. If you know the fighting techniques, like uh, if you're proficient with a Kubaton or things like that, it can be literally a deadly weapon. Believe it or not, this thing can kill someone if you know what you're doing. Uh, it can also be a very effective non-lethal fighting technique. I, I've often mentioned my best friend growing up. His name is Adam. Um, when we were uh, teenagers slash young adults, he he has... I don't know the particular form, but, you know, black belt and all that stuff. And he, every once in a while, would decide to just torture me with his Kubaton. Uh, just just in good spirit, good humor. But, man, those things, they can cause some pain. Some real pain. It, you know, when, when an actual trained user knows what they're doing. Um, serious, serious, serious pain. And this thing can really encourage someone to knock it off if they are messing with you and you don't want them to be. Um, plus, it's legal. I mean, it's it's not a knife. It's not a weapon. It's a pen. It is literally, it, it is a pen. And you can write with it. This one is ballpoint. The last one we saw was uh, gel ink. I think, I think it's ballpoint. Um, does this say? Let's see if it says. I like the ballpoint ones because you can write on virtually anything. Um, replaceable pen ink cartridges, it doesn't really say, but yeah, this feels ballpoint. We'll do the exact same writing test. Poop. Works great. The reason I like ballpoint ink is because if you have write in the rain or waterproof notebooks, you can write on that paper, which you cannot do with gel ink. I mean, you can, but it wipes right off. Um, and then it has refillable ink cartridges, and you know, you have to source that specifically. You have to find out what you want. Clip on this is a little bit, I sense this bending if you're not careful with it. Um, that would be the one drawback I see there, but glass breaker. Um, I mean, the whole thing is a temple smasher. I normally say glass breaker slash temple smasher, but this entire thing is for that. So we laugh at the term tactical pen, but this thing can can do a little bit more than just a ballpoint pen in your pocket can do. And there, there are times where they're worth having. Um, and yes, they will make it through airport security because um, technically it's a pen and there's no sharp edges on it. There, it's not banned. It's not against TSA rules, believe it or not. So um, <clears throat> the aluminum ones usually make it through the metal detector and uh, stuff like that. So, you know, a lot of people um, carry very expensive ones. Obviously, an expensive one usually has a little bit more crafting and engineering to it than a cheaper one. But to be honest, for your average daily stuff, this $18 one, it's fancy to have, you know, a $200 titanium one. I don't know, I, you know, the writing quality might be a little bit better on the titanium one, or you might just be paying for anodized titanium. I, I don't, I don't know, but... These things, I have a few of them lying around the house. You know, there are some very cheap ones you can get for like $5.99 from like Wish or places like that. I would stay away from those ones. Those ones tend to fall apart. Um, I've never experienced this one. I can't tell you how good or not it is. Um, it's, it's something that some people are, are going to find use for and others are not. So, probably put this one in meh. Just because, again, it's, you know, it, it can have uses. Some people will, it'll be a paperweight for some people in the box. Um, for me, I'll carry it under certain circumstances. It's, it's probably not going to be part of my, my daily carry. You know, it's not going to, I'm not going to EDC this, this device right here, but, um, better to have it and not need it, you know, like they say. Let's move on to the Kershaw mixtape. This is a knife I do not have. They say it has an MSRP of $44. I can almost guarantee that you could probably find this cheaper if you look for it. What is the difference between this kind of packaging and getting it in a box? Nothing. Um, I've been asked that before, and I think I neglected to answer it. Um, sometimes you will you will find this uh, Kershaw knives in packaging like this in certain stores. Sometimes you will find it in a box. Um, it, there's no difference whatsoever between finding it in the box or in this kind of packaging. Um, just FYI, it's the exact same knife. Um, sometimes when certain stores market it. They, they get it in a package like this, you know, instead of a box, like, it's whatever. But let's take a look at this knife, because 
I already like the aesthetics of this knife. I was hoping this was G10. This is plastic. And honestly, for $44, I was hoping for at least a G10 scale. Um, interest, really interesting clip. How the hell is that held on? Is that just held on by pressure? Because, so, can you see in there? It kind of folds in and then comes out. And I don't know how that clip is held on. Oh, no, there's a screw in there. I see a screw in there. So the clip is not, I thought maybe if it was just held on by the pressure of like, of that spring and this spring, you could flip it around, but I see a screw on the inside in there. So, um, wait, maybe I don't? Yeah, I do. Okay. So clip is not movable at all. It is tip up, right hand only. Really interesting clip design though. And the clip doesn't look very intrusive. No, it's really not, not that intrusive at all. Sometimes they put specs on the back of this thing. Um, they kind of do, they do. So. Uh, 7.25 inches overall with a 3.1 inch blade, 2.6 ounces. Sorry for the shadows there, guys. I'm working with my light setup. Not bad. Liner lock. Not bad. Just a smidge off center. Thumb disc. Interesting. Um, nice action. A little small in the hand, but for an EDC size blade, not bad, not bad. Certainly like the design. Has a real kind of Japanese feel to it. Um, I, you know, obviously without without looking it up, I, I don't know much about the design or the history of the knife, but it really does have kind of a, you know, sort of Japanese-inspired look. Um, very smooth action, though. And it's manual, no speed safe on this one. Um, kind of nice accents on the, the show side of the pivot there. Fit and finish on it is really good. Kershaw, even like I said, even the lower end of the Kershaw is is pretty is usually pretty good. Not bad out of the package. Uh, definitely one that I would carry around. It probably would not be my like a primary EDC for me, but I would carry it around for a day or two at least and give it a shot. Um, just it's the size in my hand that's a little iffy and you know what I would love see like my hand it's just a little too big so if I'm going to put my finger in that choil to try to keep it from slipping forward on the blade it just it feels unnatural because my fingers go to nowhere at the at the end of the knife if I choke up on it there's nothing stopping it from slipping and my finger just running right across that blade um, so call it a big hand problem you can call it a design problem if you want it's a comfortable feeling knife though, even though it's it's very it's very simple. That clip, the way it's designed, I just don't feel it very much at all. And always a you know stone, beautiful stone wash finish with Kershaw. Um, I'd love to see like maybe some special editions of this with some G10 or carbon fiber and maybe some upgraded steel. And uh, I will already have put text in there for how low I can find this for, because I know we could probably find it for less than $44. $44 has got to be the Kershaw price, but the, I mean, the action on it, and, you know, and this has got to be a lower end Kershaw model, um, is, is a surprisingly crisp and easy. Very nice. Definitely, this definitely has to go, and I like it. I, Kershaw makes great knives at all, at all price points along their spectrum. Um, you know, even the cheapest Kershaws function and are engineered as well as our most expensive ones for the most part great love it moving along we've got the vizim mlock and key mod picatinny accessory rail for 15 dollars. now this is something that i might not be able to use i don't i don't use mlock i don't have any mlock capability on my rifle my rails don't provide for that and the way mlock works is you've got these little, well, I'm gonna have to show you a picture of like an M-lock rail so you can understand. Okay, so, and it does, it does come with a little Allen key there. Um, so it's just a little accessory rail. So you can put one more little item on there, a flashlight, a laser, um, a small sight, a tiny little scope, whatever, whatever you want. And 
So these little things go behind the rail and you know in those little little holes and lock it in place and then you just basically screw them in and that's how it works and it's a pretty simple kind of system um, and then you can attach any Picatinny rail you know modular accessories on there um, again this is not going to fit on my rifle at all because it doesn't use that I've got not one again not wanting to get the video flagged or anything you know with the with the rules I don't want to pull it out again um, but um, my <clears throat> my hand guards the rails that are on there are already you know pick rail hand guards they, they, they already have they don't they don't use M lock um, you know, M lock itself is just there's no rails on it. It's it, it's just basically it looks like scaffolding that you attach the M lock rails to. And it's cool if you want a very modular setup, um, and you you know you want to be able to. They're 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 very lightweight, um, and they don't have a cheese grater effect on your hand at all. You don't have to put rubber pads on it to cover it up. Um, but you know, once you do that, you're locked into only using the M lock stuff. So for me, this is completely useless. This is something that, I mean, I'm sure I can find somebody I know that can use this, um, but it, for me, for my personal use, this would go into a don't like it because I just, I can't use it, period, dot. I do know that it's there, there are a lot of people that can get good use out of it. Um, and I don't, I, I just, you know, it's it's one of those weird, it's, it's a weird limbo item for me. Um, I, I, it's not a bad item. It's not made badly. It's not useless. It's not a, a, a bad item. I just, I have absolutely no use for this thing whatsoever. So I'm just going to put it there and leave it there. Um, let's look at the Viking Tactics VTAC Mark I Sling. So, <clears throat> that's made specifically for a collapsible stock rifle, which is cool. Because some are not. It looks like, it looks like this is a one point sling, um, and uh, you know those are not my favorite. Those are not my favorite type. I just I find them very. I'm an old I'm an old guy and I'm set in my ways, and I still like three point slings. <laughs> you know, that's just me because I'm I'm old and I don't like change. Um, but you know this is the kind of sling that. That you, it goes. How much is this? Forty-four ninety-five. It goes. Oh no, it's a it's a two-point sling. Okay. All right, that's cool. Uh, I like that better than a single-point sling. I've never liked the single-point slings. I feel like your rifle just dangles around all over the place. Um, and you know, we we got issued them once uh, on one deployment, and as a whole, the unit just did not like them very much. It says it's best if you have a side-mounted swivel. That's usually the best if you, you know, for these kinds of slings. Um, the the bottom mounted sling mounts are, are made for the old just strap slings, not tactical slings at all. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have slide mounted sling mounts on my rifle. Um, the the only thing I'm, I'm looking at with this is that it is a very narrow, thin nylon strap. So if this is going to be resting across your uh, your shoulders and stuff, you know, obviously if you got your gear on, it's not a problem. Um, and if you're downrange, you should have all your gear on when you got your rifle. But there are some situations where you're not going to have all your gear on all the time. Like for instance, uh, if you are inside your compound, if you're if you're not outside the wire, and y there are certain places where you have to be armed up at all times, like just to go to the showers or to go get chow or stuff like that. Um, and yeah, you gotta carry your rifle around. You, you, you know, since you're, since you're in the compound, you're not gonna have, you're not required, you know, you're not wearing all your gear. You're not wearing body armor. You're not wearing load bearing stuff. You, you, you know, and this might be uncomfortable after a while. Um, I'm sure you can, if you're creative, you can pat it out. That's the, I mean, that's the only drawback I see about this. Um, and there are other slings that are a little bit for for long-term use might be a little bit more um, 
more comfortable. And and believe me, you know, it might sound stupid to talk about the comfort of a sling, but that that six, seven pound rifle, you know, after 18 hours, it seven pounds feels like 70. Um, you know, we, we have the, the phrase ounces or pounds. Um, you know, at, at the end of, a, of an actual day outside the wire on patrol, every single ounce you're carrying, you, you feel it. Um, and having a nice padded sling to really take weight off, you know, to really help distribute the weight, I should say, really helps. Um, but they do say this is a favorite sling of Special Forces, so I, you know, who am I to argue with, argue with those guys? I mean, I'm a regular guy. So, anyway, um, I'll try it out. I'll try it out and, and get back to you. I, you know, I want to fit it on and, and see what I think. I can't really tell you I like it or don't like it now. Um, I have a I have an old three-point sling that I really like. It's got thicker webbing. Um, you know, it, it's been on there for a while. Um, but I will, I'll try this out. I'll try this out, and I owe you an answer on this one. And now we've got the last item in the box. Let me just put this right here is the BCM Gunfighter Vertical Grip 3997. Um, there are all sorts of vertical, you know, foregrips that you can mount. Um, I mean, there are more than, you know, shake a stick in any given direction, and like 10 different companies have made foregrips that hold batteries, that have tri uh, bipods on them, that hold flashlights, that do all sorts of stuff. Um, so... This does, this does, you know, let's see. Um, first of all, great texturing on it, I gotta say. Um, you've got texturing here, you've got texturing here. Um, feels actually pretty good. Um, just a straight stick grip, nice and big. It's gonna fit all hands. Um, it screws on, so it, you know, some are a little easier than others. This one, screws on you don't need a specific allen wrench you can use anything from a penny to uh, god forbid a knife blade to an actual screwdriver you can use oh well, uh, my thumb's doing it but you probably don't want to use your thumb you probably want to tighten it down something real you know a uh, uh, multi-tool which god where's the multi-tool i was just using the other day you guys didn't see i edited it out of the video this is the oldest piece of gear i own i was issued this when i was a little baby private at fort bliss in 1997 or 1998, I don't know. And guess what, it's still kicking. Um, it's one of the things, golden rule in the military, if you're not asked for something back at CIF, when you clear the unit, you don't give it back. Um, but here, we'll just, we'll demonstrate with this. So you put it on, and then you screw it down. This is, some things are a little easier when they have the little thumb wheel that you can just turn, that's great. But these guys are really secure. So then you put it on your rail, and then you've got your foregrip. Some people really like foregrips. I, I've never, I, I have a couple that I, I mount occasionally. I've never been a really big fan of them. It says that you can mount it reversed to increase control when grabbing handguard and grip. Okay. I don't know. Is that, I, I probably would not do that. Looks like we got a little storage unit in the bottom, which is cool you know you can store anything in here from snacks to uh cleaning equipment batteries for your optics if i can open it up um it feels like this is all rubbery so it feels like it would be waterproof um whatever you need to put in there there we go um, this actually feels like a decent one i might have to try this one out 39.97 you know i'm i'm, I'm not sure yeah, it says water-resistant rubber gasket. Um, I, you know, I like the fact that you can use this with anything, because a lot of them just give you, like, the little hex, and you gotta, you know, use... You gotta find a wrench out in the field or something. Um, I like this one. It feels good. Like, the, the size is good. The grip is good. Um, as I said just a few seconds ago, I'm not really... I've never been a big user of the foregrip. I know some guys that do, that did... I kind of, I prefer to, I prefer to just hold the rifle, um, but, you know, there's, you know, there are a lot of theories that it really does help stabilize, it takes the weight off, I don't know, but this one feels pretty nice, I like this. Uh, the one that I currently have, I think, is by Mission First Tactical, and it has a, a flashlight adapter in it, and uh, if it has a tail, a tail button, it's got a little uh, thing you can squeeze to, um, 
to to turn on the light, but then I also have different lights that, you know, that from Olight that has the little pressure pad that mounts right on anyway. So I don't use it. I really don't use it at all. Um, I might try this one out and see how it goes. But that's the box. You know, we've been we've been getting um, barrel and blades with with you know a few different you know I don't know actually maybe it's the same amount of items. I think, but like I said, you know, th this one is very specific. I definitely see a lot of people being maybe even turned off a little bit by this box because if you are not if you're not a rifle owner and a shooter there you know there's there's a lot there's a few items in this box that just one two three four out of the seven that just you know or or six one two three four five six sorry yeah four items out of the six that just really don't apply to your life at all and uh, you know you might be very upset at having received this box you can still use the dry bag even if you don't have a rifle, for a lot of stuff. Dry bags are really good to have on hand for anything. But, you know, even if you do have a rifle, if you don't have an M-Lock rail, what are you gonna do with this? Um, you know, if you don't have a rifle, this isn't gonna do you any good. If you don't have a rifle, this isn't gonna do you any good. If you don't have a collapsible stock, this isn't gonna do you any good without an adapter. So now you've got basically the tactical pen that I hope you'll wanna use, but you've got a nice knife. So I, I definitely understand if there's going to be a little bit of grief coming Barrel and Blade's way about this box. But it is Barrel and Blade. So, you know, they gotta, there's got to be some shooting stuff now and then. Uh, I, I just, I, I have rifles, so this stuff kind of works for me. Um, and, you know, so I would, I, I would encourage those who, who do find use for this stuff to chime in but also you know if you if you don't make your voice heard you know let them know hey this is cool for those who who have the stuff but maybe maybe there they could they could work some alternate stuff I, i'm i'm sure it would be a logistical nightmare for them but you know maybe when you sign up they could be like hey are you a, a firearms owner are you a shooter are you whatever you know and then there could be an alternate kind of thing i don't know i'm just spitballing here i know how much trouble that would be for them um, to try to like work two different kinds of boxes, but um, overall, um, I like these three items. I really do. The dry bag is a good quality dry bag, and it's really big. You put lots of stuff. This foregrip, I'm definitely going to try it out. Um, it's a little different from other ones I've seen. I like it. Always like a good Kershaw knife. It's a nice knife. Don't have it in the collection yet. I just did the Kershaw collection video too. Uh, definitely like it though. Um, cool knife kind of iffy on this but I'll, I'll give it a try again i'm not likely to carry this around very often but it's always good to have you know one around um just in your in your in your wherever you keep your stuff um this to me though is useless but i'm gonna find it a good home and i think i know exactly who i'm gonna give it to so that's that's okay um not the most stellar barrel and blade box but they gave us some good items some good items that are definitely going to get use um, I just, one more time, I feel bad for those who, who don't fall into the, into the rifle shooter category because this box really isn't, isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to be for them. Hopefully, though, next month, it'll be a great kind of survival type box or, a, you know, a, a bushcraft box or an outdoors box or, or something like that that we can make up for it with it. So now, as always, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of this box? What did you really like? What did you not really like? Um, what would you like to see me, if you, if you saw me do a follow-up video on something, what would you like to see me do? This is not the kind of thing where I can really demonstrate stuff or work with stuff, but, you know, if I was, what would you like to see me do? How would you like to see me do a follow-up on this box? So, there we go. There's Barrel and Blade, January 2021. Your thoughts, guys. Feel free. While you're doing that, remember, you are all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will be back again real soon.